people get ready. There's a train a coming. You don't need no ticket, just get on board. All you need is faith to hear that diesel humming. I don't remember the next line, just thank the Lord. <clears throat> you haven't heard much from me. Um, ever since Obama left the office, you know, I said a lot of things in the last eight years, and I've believed that he's the Antichrist. But, uh, you know, with Trump coming into office, it's really kind of left me scratching my head. I don't want to say anything else till I say this. I don't have much to say, but if the Holy Spirit has something to say, I yield right now, and Lord, you say whatever you want. So, you know, with what I just said, it's brought a lot of discouragement because if I believed for eight years that Obama's the Antichrist, and all of a sudden he's taking a back seat and, you know, not in power anymore, it makes me wonder. You know, if I believed that for eight something years, ever since I got born again, you know, I got born again in uh, late 2007, early 2008 right when that guy came into office. You know, he did a lot of Antichrist things. He betrayed Israel. You know, Resolu Resolution 2334 at the UN condemning Israeli settlements. And, uh, you know, he brought in a spirit of Antichrist. He brought in all this LGBT and abortion. And he made it acceptable. He made it okay to come out of the closet. He made it okay to kill your baby and not be condemned for it you know he made it okay to do whatever you want live however you want and it's all right but what we see now is we see trump come in and you know i don't give him a free pass on anything he's accountable to god just like anybody but you know he's done things like wanting to overturn roe versus wade he's uh undone the trainee bathrooms at target you know if I had a, you know, if I had a biological kid, I'd never let them go in one of those bathrooms, uh, you know, unattended, unsupervised. Because, uh, you know, what do you do with a big old perverted man that's dressed like a woman thinks he can go to a woman's bathroom? You know, there's no way. But we've come into a generation that thinks that evil's good and good is evil. And, uh, you know, the thing going on with Trump is that he's come to undo the Obama nation. He's come in to undo what's become acceptable, LGBT and kill your baby. And, you know, you think you got women's rights. Well, what women have the right to kill the next generation of women? <laughs> you got women's rights, but you're killing off your next generation. You know, same thing with LGBT. You know, you think you want to have a male-on-male -male marriage and a female-on-female -female marriage, well, you're killing your next generation. You know, you've squandered the ability to reproduce because you think you can sword fight. Huh. You think you can do the funny stuff in the dark and uh, have it your way. I don't think so. So what's going on is that all this sin's exposed and the wheats and the tares are growing up together and we're seeing who's who. We're seeing who's on the side of righteousness and who's on the side of unrighteousness. You know? We're seeing who is deciding that you're going to be accountable to morals and the ways of God and you know, your conscience, or you're going to go the way of the flesh and do whatever the devil says. So, you know, I still watch end time videos, and I've seen a lot of stuff where floods are escalating, earthquakes are escalating, tsunamis, tornadoes, hurricanes, murder, rape. 
evil. That stuff is escalating, you know? At the end of the book of Daniel, it says that knowledge shall increase and many shall run to and fro. You know? I am on foot right now. You know, I'm actually getting paid right now, if you can believe it. <laughs> the, uh, the job that I'm on, you know, I need to wash the trucks. So it's actually, it's actually beneficial for me to walk a mile back to the shop and go get another truck instead of sit around and wait. But the point of that is that, you know, I'm walking now. I'm hoofing it the way that people used to do. But when I'm in a truck, you know, I'm traveling 430 miles in a day. You know, or I can get on a plane right now and be on the other, the other side of the country in four to five hours. I can be on the other side of the world before the sun goes down. If I go get on a bird, you know, so many shall travel to and fro, and knowledge shall increase. You know, the thing that I'm recording this video with, there's more technology in this phone than there was in the National NASA shuttle that went to the moon. You know, certainly the end times. Everything that Jesus said is happening. Natural disasters increasing. Look at all the animals dying off for no reason. Oh, there's a reason, the Hosea prophecy, but no natural reason. No reason that scientists can understand. You know, we're in the generation that is going to see the end. We have come to it. And I don't, I don't have a date for you. I don't have a year for you. You know, I think it's this year. But I've thought it's this year every year since I got born again. <laughs> so what do I know? So, here's the thing that I believe the Lord gave me to share with you. You know, the everything prior to this was just the state of affairs, the state of the world, the state of the union address from the Fire Charger YouTube channel. But um, here's what the Lord gave me. You will meet the Lord when your need is bigger than your pride. You know, I had an encounter this morning. I went to the truck stop and had me an awful truck stop breakfast. <laughs> they call it a country scramble because it's not what is on your plate. It's what happens in your guts. <laughs> so, I'm sitting there having my country scramble and my country coffee and my reading my country paper in my country truck stop. And I see a guy. I'm like, hey, I know you. Well, it's the pastor in this local town. This is a little tiny town. It's smaller than the one I lived in in Ohio, if you can believe that. But, uh, you know, a little country preacher with a church of 20, 30 regulars, I guess. But he's the one that invited Dan Moeller to town. You know, Dan Moeller, if you've heard of him, he's the guy that uh, discipled Todd White. So... We are fairly like-minded, you know, believe in healing, believe in deliverance, believe in the end times. So I invited her to sit down and have breakfast with me. And, uh, you know, he was on divine appointment. He was on assignment, on a mission. Thought he was just going to the truck stop to have some coffee, but he's supposed to be sitting at my table. And he's talking about, you know, don't let the devil get in your head and, you know, amplify the failures and think that, you know, it's not working so much that you don't continue. You just do what the Lord says and let Him handle His part. So, He encouraged me a lot. You know, prayed for me right there at the table. And, uh, you know, I, I got a few sermons I've listened to in the last week from Carter Conlon. He's the one that took over the pulpit from David Wilkerson, if you're not familiar with him. And he just did a uh, couple sermons recently, one on disappointment. And, uh, you know, I'll link those if you're in a similar state of affairs. But, uh, you know, we live in a time where the devil's seeking who he can devour. I'm not getting devoured, you know. I may be, I may be having a hard time, you know, because I've got to question the things that I've believed. You know, 
And be careful about being all self-righteous, I told you so. Before you find yourself in a similar position, thinking that you got all the answers and got the monopoly on truth. You know, don't think that you're infallible. You know. I think I used to have a pretty good grasp on things, but I've gotten humbled. I've gotten corrected. I've gotten my words handed back to me. You know. So be careful what you say and think and think that you got an upper hand on some other Christian. Your job is to love on other people and pull them up, not kick them while they're down. So, you know, I'm only saying what I feel like the Lord wants me to say, and I feel like it's been said. So, pray for me if you want. If you don't, go on your way. But we're coming into a time where if you don't have somebody to hold you up, you're going to fall down. You know, if the Lord doesn't come back into your life, He's not going to... He's not going to invade where he's not welcome, you know. He may come give you a taste of the grace, but he's not going to force feed you. He's going to give you a taste of the goodness like he did to me. You know, I was an alcoholic. Drank almost every day. And he delivered me. I didn't deserve it. I don't even know if I asked for it. I think I just waved the white flag and said, hey, this thing's got me beat. But he beat it. You know, I just told a guy the other day, I was right there when a uh, Bradley light tank got blown up in Iraq. Yeah, I wasn't there when it got blown up, but I was there for the cleanup. It's my job to flip that thing over when there were seven dudes inside, burnt to a crisp, couldn't tell one from another. He told me that those people weren't there. You know, it gave me a lot of peace that the the spirit has left the body. You know? Your spirit's going to leave your body someday. All you got to do is look at the news. Look at how fast people check out. You could be minding your business and your number's up. You know, I'm not putting a curse on anybody. I'm just telling you the truth of life. You know? Doesn't take much to check out of this world. You're in a fragile body. You're going somewhere. Your spirit is going to have an eternal home. It's either going to be hot. <laughs> It's going to be hot, or it's going to be paradise. And you don't get to paradise by just being a good person. Adam and Eve thought they were good people, but all it took was one sin to get them tossed out. Only took one sin to get the devil thrown out. So, get under the blood of Jesus. He paid for the payment of your sin. He paid the ransom. He took your place. But got to follow him got to be obedient you know i don't know the gospel is that he died for you to pay for what you can't afford so you can be in eternity with him you know heaven's not just a place it's a person heaven is more about being in his presence than it is about streets of gold and mansions so jesus christ is the way the truth and the life it's a narrow path you know, Jesus is like a railroad track. <laughs> you know, if you go off this track, you're crashing. But if you stay on this track, you're going to get to one destination. So, oh, I don't have much else to say, but, you know, that's it. God bless you. Pray for me if you want. If you don't, toodaloo, buckaroo. That's all I got. God bless.